Hey, in today's English lesson, I am going to teach you five simple steps that will help you speak English with confidence in any situation. Are you ready? Well then, I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. Here is tip number one. Speak clearly and loudly. Once again, speak clearly and loudly. Now, why is this so important to you as an English learner? Here's the first thing. When you speak clearly and loudly, it will help you articulate your thoughts and ideas more effectively, making you appear more confident in your speech. You see, when people are listening to you, and they're watching you and they're observing you, they also need to see that you feel confident in yourself. So when you speak clearly and loudly, they immediately feel like you are a confident English speaker, and that will help you feel more confident as well. So again, articulating your thoughts and ideas, it will help you do this more effectively. The second thing is this, this will also help you overcome any fears you may have about speaking in public because it will help you feel more confident. When you focus on speaking clearly, when you focus on actually getting the words out and not mumbling, sometimes this happens to be very honest as an English learner. Sometimes when you're going to say something and you're not sure, Sometimes your words, your words start coming out like this, right? You start mumbling a bit. Why? Because you get nervous and you're not sure how the people listening to you will respond. Don't do that. Instead, be confident. Don't worry about making mistakes. Instead, whatever your thought is, whatever your idea is, whatever you'd like to say, say it loudly and clearly. This is how you'll start speaking English with confidence. The other point is the fact that speaking clearly and loudly will help you avoid misunderstandings or misinterpretations. Think about it. Have you ever been speaking in English and the person said to you, huh? I'm, what did you say? I, I didn't understand you. Say that again, please. W what are you saying? When that happens over and over again, it can actually make you feel a little bit nervous. So to eliminate that, speak clearly and loudly. There will be no misunderstandings. Why? Because your words will come out and be easy to understand. So again, remember the first step you're trying to speak English confidently in any situation. The first step is to speak clearly and loudly right now. You can understand everything I'm saying, right? I'm speaking clearly and loudly. Let's go to tip number two. Tip number two is to make eye contact. Once again, make eye contact right now. You're watching this lesson, right? You're watching this on YouTube, but imagine if I was teaching you and my eyes were somewhere else, all of a sudden it wouldn't be interesting. You'd probably think, Hey, Teacher Tiffany, why aren't you looking at me? Making eye contact actually makes the listener feel like you are more confident in yourself. It actually is another way for you to <sighs> present yourself in a confident way. So making eye contact, it can help establish a connection with the person you are speaking to making them feel more engaged and interested in what you are saying right now. Oh yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm looking directly at you, right? I'm making eye contact and you feel a little bit more engaged, right? You feel more interested in this lesson. That's what happens when you make eye contact. Remember we're talking about speaking English with more confidence and eye contact is extremely important. The second reason, the second point, why this is so important, this can also help you kind of gauge the other person's response to what you are saying, which will help you adjust your tone or message accordingly. 
I want you to imagine this situation. You're giving a response. You're speaking English. You're talking about your life, but the other person is kind of looking away and you're trying to make eye contact, but you can tell, Oh, wait a minute. They're not understanding my story. Wait a minute. They're not following along and this will help you adjust. Remember speaking English confidently is not just about the words that you are using. It's about the message you are delivering and how the person is receiving it. So when you make eye contact, you'll be able to read their expressions to see, ah, are they understanding? Are they following? Are they enjoying what I'm saying? Eye contact is so important. Another reason is because it can help you develop better communication skills because you will be able to better understand the person you are speaking to. There's something interesting about eye contact. I'll tell you a quick story. It's not story time just yet. That happens at the end, but it's so interesting. When I was living in South Korea, as you know, I'm an African American woman. And when I lived in South Korea for 10 years, whenever I ran into another African American, whether it was a woman or a man, we would make eye contact. We wouldn't say anything, but we'd make eye contact and kind of nod our head. Basically saying, Hey, I see you. You're black in Korea too. That's what's up. We didn't say anything, but by making eye contact, we were able to understand each other. This is why it's so important for you to make eye contact when you're speaking English. Once again, you will actually better understand the person you're speaking to. It doesn't matter what culture you're from. We speak to each other through our looks through our eyes. It's so important. Again, the second thing is make eye contact. Now tip number three, another important one, smile when you speak. Now you already know, yeah, you already know. I love to smile, but I want to help you understand the importance of smiling when you speak English. You enjoy my lessons. You enjoy following my English lessons and I enjoy being your English teacher. One aspect that students always tell me they love is the fact that I smile all the time. Now my smiles are genuine. I'm genuinely a happen, happy person. But when you smile as you're speaking, people will see you as being more confident and it will actually help you feel more confident. So remember smiling when you speak, can help the person making the person listening to you feel more comfortable and relaxed in your company. If I all of a sudden stopped smiling and said, number two, this is what you need to do when you study English, the feeling would change, right? But the moment you see it, you see it. My smile starts to get bigger. You start to feel more comfortable. You start to enjoy the lesson more. The same will happen for you when you're speaking English. Remember to smile. It's totally okay. It will make those listening to you feel more comfortable. Another reason it can also help you appear more friendly and approachable. This will make it easier for others to engage with you in conversation. If you're a smiling person, if you're standing somewhere and you're smiling, or if you're already speaking English and you're smiling, other people are going to want to come and have a conversation with you as well. That's going to make you feel more confident. Oh, people are enjoying conversations with me. People want to speak with me. People like spending time with me. That's going to build your confidence. You see that we're not just talking about learning new words, learning new expressions and idioms. These things are important, but when you are trying to speak English confidently, you have to understand many things, not just words and expressions. Again, you need to remember to smile when you speak. Also smiling when you speak can help you convey enthusiasm and interest in the topic you are discussing, which will cause your listeners to be more engaged. If someone feels like you're enthusiastic or you're enjoying what you're speaking about, they will immediately become more interested. 
I love teaching English. I love helping you with these tips and you can see the enthusiasm. You can see that I truly enjoy this. This is what will happen when you start smiling as you speak English. Again, we're talking about speaking English confidently in any situation. So after you start smiling in the situation, we're going to be moving to tip number four, pay attention to body language. This is so important. You see people's body language will let you know how they are feeling about what you're saying. And someone's body language actually can affect how you feel about yourself. So here's the thing. When you pay attention to body language, it will help you understand the other person's response better making it easier for you to adjust your message or tone accordingly. I used to do this when I was in class in South Korea, teaching English, I would start a lesson and I would make sure to watch my students body language. Sometimes my students after lunch in the afternoon, they would be a little tired. So maybe even though the lesson was interesting, their body language was showing me that they needed a break. So I adjusted my lessons. I adjusted what I was talking about. Maybe I would tell a story to give them a little bit more energy. It's so important to pay attention to someone's body language because it affects you. If they look disinterested, you can feel, oh, maybe my English is not good. Watch their body language and change your tone and it will help you feel much more confident. The second thing. It can also help you improve your own body language, which will make you more effective and confident in your ability to convey your message. For example, if I'm watching the person that's listening to me and their body language is like this, they, they seem to be really interested and engaged immediately. I'm going to feel more confident in what I'm saying. I'm going to actually be more enthusiastic, right? But if their body language is showing me they're not interested, I still need to change my body language. Okay. Let me actually change my tone. Let me fix my body language so that I can affect the other person. We're talking about speaking English confidently and you need to remember your body language is important. And so is the body language of the person listening to you. The other thing to remember is this can help you become a more empathetic and effective communicator. Remember communication is not just about the words you use. Think about me right now. I'm teaching you English, my facial expression, the way that my hands are moving. I'm using my hands to explain this to you, right? I'm actually becoming a more effective communicator each time I record a lesson for you because I'm making sure that my body language is going along with the lesson I'm teaching you because I can understand what you need to know to move forward. I've watched students in classes. Okay. My body language can help them understand more. So when you again, pay attention to body language, it can help you become a more effective communicator. Makes sense, right? All right. Tip number five, tip number five is very important. Believe that you can speak English well. This is something I need you to really remember. You must believe that it's possible. You must believe in yourself. If your goal is to speak English confidently, you have to believe that it's actually possible. You see, the thing is this believing in yourself is key to developing confidence in your speaking abilities because it can help you overcome any self doubt. In order to speak with confidence, you have to remove self doubt. You have to remove those thoughts that come in sometimes. Oh, my English is not that good. Oh, I made a mistake. Remove those thoughts. If you want to speak English with confidence, you have to believe that you can speak English. Well, the second thing is it can help you stay motivated and committed to improving your speaking skills even in the face of challenges or setbacks. Sometimes English is going to be hard, but if you believe that you can do it, even when challenges arise and setbacks come up, 
You can do away with them. You can ignore them because you believe that you can speak English with confidence. The other thing to remember is this, when you believe in yourself, it will help you maintain a positive attitude when you approach someone to start a conversation in English. So instead of walking up to someone and having the thoughts of, Oh no, Oh no, I'm going to make a mistake. Oh no. Are they going to say I'm not good at speaking English? Instead, you'll say this, Ooh, I can do it. I can do it. I'm walking up to this native English speaker and I am going to start this conversation. I can do it. Believing in yourself is so important. Now, remember these five steps will help you speak English with confidence. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, but don't forget if you want to get even more lessons from me, and if you want to be my homie, you can join this YouTube channel. I have extra lessons exclusively for my homies and you can become one. All you have to do is hit the button right below this video. If you're watching the video, it says join right under this video not the subscribe button, hit the join button, and that will make you an official homie. That's right. You'll be my homie and you'll get extra English lessons every single week from me. That's right. Extra English lessons to help you even more. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I will talk to you in the next one. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. So I want to tell you a story about a time when I had to believe in myself. I told you today, I gave you five tips about how to speak English confidently. Now, I remember the very first time I had to speak in public. I was asked to preach a sermon at my church and I think I was about 12 or 13 years old. And think about this. My church had between four to 500 members. I was between the ages of 12 and 13. I was very young and they wanted me to speak for children's Sabbath. This was the day everyone came together, celebrated the children. And my uncle said, Tiff, I believe in you. I will help you. So my uncle sat me down and we went through what I was going to preach about the sermon. We went through the verses that I was going to use for the sermon and everything was laid out. And I still remember sitting in my uncle's car and going over this sermon and thinking to myself, wow, I'm really about to do this. Reminding myself, Tiff, you can do this. God is going to help you. You can do it. We spoke about my body language. We spoke about my posture, walking up to the front, standing in front of four to 500 people and speaking with confidence. And I remember I walked up on that pulpit. I had my notes ready and I remembered my uncle, the time he spent with me organizing my sermon and how much he believed in me. And I believed in myself and I said, God, let's do this together. And I delivered the sermon and people said afterwards that it was amazing. It was a blessing. They enjoyed it. And I'll never forget that moment because it was the first time that I stood in front of a large group of people and delivered a message and felt confident in what I was doing. Remember, you can do anything you put your mind to. I hope this encourages you and never forget that you can speak English with confidence.